Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Drum Q-Tip of the Week. My name, of course, is Quincy Davis. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this lesson, checking out my channel. I put out a lot of videos that many drummers around the world have found helpful, and I think you will too. So please consider subscribing, and of course, let me know how much you enjoy this lesson by hitting that like button. All right, I have a great lesson in store for you guys. I'm so excited. In fact, it's such an important lesson that I brought back the slipper cam. In fact, I brought back not just one, but two slipper cams for this lesson because um, I'm going to be talking about and breaking down bass drum technique for feathering the bass drum and also playing doubles. Um, so, and I want to make sure that you have a couple different angles of viewing the technique that I use. And remember, everybody's technique is going to be a little different. So I can only show you what I do. So if you're ready, then you got to let me know. The newbies don't know what's going on right now, but you're going to let them know what to do. So we're going in only if you're ready. Are you guys ready? Are you really, really, really ready? I'm always ready. You guys are not always ready. You're, you get there by the end of the lesson, but I need you in right now. Are you ready? Well, then let's go! All right, so I'm gonna be starting out talking about bass drum feathering, a very important technique to jazz drumming that stems from the swing era when drummers would play the bass drum as such, right? Four on the floor. But then as the music kind of moved towards small groups and smaller venues, uh, drummers began to go from playing time on the hi-hats, right? to playing time on the ride cymbal and also playing the bass drum quieter. and But yet retaining the feeling behind the bass drum by feathering. So it went from this to, and it's very subtle, but it really does make a difference. So I want you to hear um, bass drum feathering in context of me playing time with my ride cymbal, okay? So I'll do uh, an A, B. A, the A version will be with the feathering, and the B version will be without the feathering. And you tell me if you can hear a difference. One, two, one, two, three, four. All right? B. All right? Can you hear a difference? Maybe on video, um, maybe it's hard to hear, or maybe if you're only watching this on your iPhone, it's hard to hear the lower frequencies. But if you were in this room, you would absolutely be able to hear, and more importantly, feel the difference so uh, but again it's so important that you're able to keep this volume underneath the rest of the band namely the bass player because they're also playing quarter notes with you and if you're playing the bass drum too loud then it's going to interfere with their their quarter notes okay so you should be able to play um feather at different dynamics whether you're here which is pretty quiet but sometimes you want to feather a little, a little stronger. And that's fine. As long as it's underneath the bass player. Okay? All right, now I want to show you three techniques. Actually, four techniques that you can use for the bass drum. Um, but only one of them, for me, for my money, is the best. It's the best of all worlds. And I'll explain why when we get there. So the first technique is where you pull the beater off the head. And also be aware, stay aware of the, the sound that I'm getting from the bass drum, right? So with this technique, this is, we'll call it number one, I'm pulling the beater off the head, right? As a result, you can really hear the resonance of the bass drum. In jazz, we like to keep the bass drum open. Sometimes some, some drummers like to muffle the bass drum, maybe put a towel on this side, which is fine as well, but 
in general, it's good to practice on an open bass drum because it really forces you to work on your control. So this amount of volume will be a lot for the for the band. It builds up and it permeates the bandstand with an open bass drum again, right? So that's technique number one or approach number one. Okay, approach number two is where you push the beater in with each beat, okay? So it's this. So I'm pushing on each beat, which is not bad. Now the bass drum's muffled. However, I'm working pretty hard to keep the beater in. Right? That's one thing. Also, it's hard to control the volume because if you're pushing, then you have to you you really have to be able to control how much you push. So I'm really thinking about how much I'm using extra muscles to, to control it. Right? So that's that's technique or approach number two. Approach number three is the one that I use. I'm gonna show you one more approach that's pretty different. But maybe some of you will, will like it. This is the technique, technique number three, or approach number three. But this is what I do. And I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. So this technique is kind of the best of um, approach number one and approach number two, in that I am simply, I'm not pulling off and I'm not pushing. I'm simply just resting the beater with on each beat. When I say I'm resting the beater on each beat, I literally mean that only because when I'm resting my foot, you'll notice in its resting state, my foot, I guess the weight of my foot and my leg makes it so that the beater is actually in the head. So I'm not pushing and I certainly am not pulling off. But in this state, the beater is on the head. Therefore, on each beat, if I just go back to a resting state, a rested state, that means the beater is going to return back home, so to speak, right? And I'm going to explain to you and kind of break down the tension of my pedal that allows me to, to make sure that in a rested state, the beater is on the head. I'm going to break that break that down in a second, it, which will lead us into doubles as well. But before I do that, um, I want to make sure you understand that. So I'm not thinking about it. And the faster we get, right, the faster I get, naturally, it's going to the sound is going to build up. So you really have to control that sound at a faster tempo it gets harder and harder and also the time that the beater stays on the head is less at a faster tempo therefore you get less of the natural muffling of the beater so you get more sound you hear that compared to right so you really have to practice that i'm going to show you this fourth technique which is something i saw my friend alvin atkinson kind of talk about which is reverse feathering and reverse feathering he explains it is simply essentially patting your heel which is something we all we always do right and it creates that sound maybe that's something you can mess around with the main thing with feathering is that it grounds us it grounds the time it ground it gives a grounding feeling so that definitely grounds me I don't know if it's as effective. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but maybe it's something you can mess around with. So now I'm just gonna play a little bit more time and I want you to just try to hear the bass drum. Okay? And that's what I'll be doing. I'll play at different tempos too. One, two, three, four.
right? There's a few questions that always come to me when the topic is based from feather. One of them is um, when I play an accent, when do you return back to feather? Uh, there's no exact science to it, um, so it's okay if you if a few beats go by and you don't return back to feather. So what I do, if I'm you know if I'm just playing and I play an accent and I want to go back to feathering, it kind of it will look like this or sound like this. Right? 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 So that's the first thing. Another thing is um, I would highly recommend practicing your feet. I have a video that I talk about my hi-hat technique. Maybe I'll make, it's pretty old, so maybe I'll make a new one. Uh, but I don't wanna kinda get into that in this lesson, but it's imperative that you practice your, your feet together. When your feet are not together, um, the groove suffers greatly. So make sure you're able to play with both feet together, and I really mean together, okay? To create a nice foundation. Another thing is heel up or heel down. Definitely heel down for feathering, okay? Through this whole video, you'll see me kind of playing heel down. Doesn't mean I don't lift my heel up at times, but my generally in jazz, we don't play the bass drum nearly as loud as, as other styles, right? So we don't need to press for that extra volume and, and punch and kick. Um, but like I said, there are definitely times I do, and I'm going to tell you those times in a second. But for now, in general, your default should be heel down. And that will alleviate tension that can, can build up in your shin, in the front part of your leg, in, uh, on the front part of your calf, right? Heel up, it's really hard to control that. So definitely practice heel down. Um, now, in those instances where I want a punch, I want a bigger, I'll do it now so you can see it and then I'll talk about it. So if I'm trying to get that Elvin Jones, ba boom, that kind of sound, right? Then I'll definitely lift my heel on that second note. So coming out of a roll, see my heel lifts. And there you go. And I'll take, take my shoe off, hit <laughs> my slipper off so you can see that. Okay, so. All right. So I definitely lift my heel up in those instances. Or if I'm playing something um, that just needs more impact in the bass drum, more volume. You know, right, you see, you see my heel is definitely up for that. I can also play that groove with my heel down. Right? But it doesn't match. Sometimes I need a lot more volume in the bass drum. So. So as you can see, I'm definitely lifting my heel up in those instances. Um, and then another instance which I use my heel up is just when I want a muffled sound in the bass drum, right? I'll put my slipper back on. When I need a muffled sound in the bass drum, I like that sound, right? Sometimes I want this, and sometimes I want that. And sometimes I want it really tight and punchy. And that's when I lift my heel up, right? So beater's in, but it's not as punchy as when I lift my heel up and leave the beater in. All right? So.
All right, so now I want to talk about the pedal itself and ways you can adjust it to get it to do what you want it to do. If you notice, my bass drum pedal in, its, in my rested state, as I spoke about earlier, the beater itself is on the head, right? But you can also adjust the pedal so that when you sit down and you're just in, its, in your rested state, the pedal is off the head. And these four adjustments can affect whether it's on the head or off the head, how quick it responds, how slow it responds, all these types of things. So check this out. All right, the first way that you can adjust your pedal is through the spring tension. This is probably the most important adjustment you can make. Take time to figure out the best uh, spring tension for you because everyone's going to be different, okay? So um, check out this little demonstration I, I made for you to just show you the difference in reaction of the pedal when you adjust the spring tension. All right, so this is the pedal with less tension. And you can kind of see how it's a pretty smooth back and forth, springing motion. And it'll keep on going for a while. And then this is the one with more tension, a lot more tension. Watch how, you see how it's a little more um, jagged, right? Less smooth. And the result, at least for my, for me and in my experience, is that this is much harder to control, to, especially for doubles, because of that tension. Whereas this one kind of does what I what I wanted to do with less kickback, if you will, <laughs> right? It's a little more um, compliant and responsive to wh what exactly I do with the pedal. Uh, with my foot. Okay, here's one more time for the people in the back who missed it. Here we go. This is the less um, tight pedal. Smooth. Patient. <laughs> kind. Calm. And this one is a little more crazy acting, <laughs> to put it in layman's terms. All right. Also, it doesn't go as far forward as this one, partially because I have it kind of adjusted so that the, the beater is further back on this one compared to this one. So, All right, so the next adjustment that you can make is how far back do you want the beater in its rested state? So you can, you can adjust it so that the beater's a little further back like that. You can adjust it so that the beater's closer or somewhere in the middle. For me, it's somewhere in the middle, right? And I, I don't have an exact science for this, but this kind of works for me. I don't like it when it's too far back, and I certainly don't like it when it's too close up because then you have no leverage. Here you have to work really hard to get the beater to, go, to, to move forward and hit the, the, the head. So you have to adjust that. This third adjustment is also very important to how the, the pedal feels, right? And the weight, the swing weight, so to speak, the swing weight. When you're actually pressing down, the swing weight of the pedal will change depending on the height of the beater. So in my case, the beater hits around here and it's not too high, but it's not too low. Right? Some drummers like the beater to, to be somewhere more like this, right? In which that will create more swing weight and you'll, you'll feel the, the beater, the weight of the beater a lot more, making it either easier or tougher for you, depending on who you are, depending on your, your preferences. Again, this is all preference. I'm just letting you know what your options are. For me, I prefer not too high, not too low, somewhere in the middle and I guess since this is an 18 inch bass drum um, the beater in my case hits right in the center essentially okay so that's another adjustment you can make 
All right, and this fourth adjustment is actually has nothing to do with the pedal. Well, it does, but it's more on the placement of your foot. And if you notice, my the placement of my foot, I'll take my slipper off, is all the way forward on the bass drum pedal plate. It's all the way forward. For me, that gives me the best control. The further back you go, I feel less control. And I have to work a little harder to get the bass drum to kind of speak the way I want it to speak. Okay? So I try to make sure that my, my foot is all the way to the front. Right? And that really improves my overall control and comfort of playing the bass drum. Doubles in the bass drum, right? Doubles are not easy. I'll be the first to admit that my doubles are not the fastest by any means, but they're functional. But many drummers really struggle with playing doubles in the bass drum. Um, I think some of those struggles stem from not really adjusting the pedal <coughs> in a way that is conducive to playing doubles in the bass drum. So that's the first thing. Make sure your pedal really suits your playing your playing style suits what you want to do suits your body suits your foot all these kinds of things tweak all these different adjustments that i spoke about um, and see if just by doing that your doubles improve okay um, i'm going to demonstrate what it's like for me to play doubles on a pedal to my liking and a pedal less to my liking um, with more tension so you'll get to see what that's like but You don't want you don't always want that second note to be so accented, but I think that's a good place to start if you're struggling with doubles. It's kind of like practicing doubles in your hands. That's a good place, good thing to practice when you're struggling getting that second note to come out. And essentially you're dropping your foot with the ex with the second note. Relax, 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 and then push down. All right? That's my technique. And just practicing that alone, I think, could help. And just try to create as much weight on that second note as possible. Then the more comfortable you get, you should start to be able to control and eventually be able to play doubles with your heel down as well. But there's a lot of action with, with my toes up front to create that control. Right? As opposed to my, my whole foot just staying completely stagnant and just trying to create the velocity out of thin air. So my whole foot is involved, certainly, um, and you should definitely practice heel up first. As much weight as you can create. That's kind of what I'm doing. And then you go from that to playing with your heel down. And even with my heel down, still using my toes right so there's no real secret other than you got to practice it start slow and speed it up slowly adjust your pedal I'm gonna demonstrate now the difference of my comfort and how how well I'm able to play doubles on this pedal which I'm comfortable on and the other pedal which I'm less comfortable on All right, so now I'm on a pedal that I'm much less comfortable with because it's the same pedal, but it's adjusted differently. There's a lot more tension in this one. And as you can see right off the bat, the beater does not hit 
the head, right? Even though it's close, it's not completely on the head. And for me, that makes a difference. Also, it's the tension is much tighter, right? The other, other one was much more loose and relaxed. This one is not. I, I showed you that, that video demonstrating the difference. So I'm feeling the tension even just sitting here, even just resting. I'm feeling tension. I'm feeling like the pedal's not going to agree with me. And sure enough, when I play a double, I can't get that first note to speak as well. It's much harder for me. Right? And I find that a lot of drummers struggle with that first note often. They can't get that, that note to come out. So that could be uh, a sign that the, the pedal, the tension on the pedal is too tight. Right? Other adjustments, like I mentioned, are the beater height and also how far back, in this case, the pedal comes back quite a bit further than the other pedal. Again, giving me more real estate to have to come forward and making it harder, really, to control every note that I'm playing. So even feathering, I don't feel as much control. I'm able to do it, yes, but I definitely feel especially at faster tempos, it's going to get harder and harder, um, especially the longer I play with this pedal. So I'm going back to the other pedal. All right, so that is the lesson, understanding these important concepts better and how to improve them instantly because those adjustments in the bass drum pedal can be game changers. Um, and again, I tried to answer as many of the questions that I've encountered over the years when I talked to, to drummers and their frustrations hearing their frustrations with their bass drum technique, feathering, and also playing doubles. So hopefully this lesson helps you. Use it as a reference. Come back to it if you need to. Uh, ask me some questions down below. I'll be looking for your comments. Other than that, you know what to do. Until the next lesson, I want you to practice hard. But as always, practice smart. Take care. Bye-bye.